Tanya Lacantro, and I'm at the Low Emissions Conference here at the Western in Perth. And I'm joined today by Mr. Yurko Zavella, who's from Argosy Minerals. Good day, Yurko. How are you? Good, thanks. Um, Argosy rode that lithium wave. I think you're one of the market darling stocks. So I know the whole sector's come back, but how are you going to regain that momentum? Yeah, um, exactly, Tony. We, we, we actually had a different strategy, uh, the way we went about it. Um, we, we very much wanted to prove our processing technology uh, rather than focusing on exploration given the, uh, the fact that we, we always felt comfortable with knowing where the resource was, obviously in the Salt Lake. Um, so it was really about proving that technology. What we, um, what we marketed and what we've said we'll do, we've done till date, which is produce battery quality uh, lithium carbonate. Uh, the next step for us now is to get our uh, pre preliminary economic assessment into the market, show the credentials and the economics of the project, and then move into um, financing to construct the commercial stage of the project. I know there's been some issues with Argentina in the past, can, but can you explain which province you're, you're in and the mining laws? Yes, that so obviously uh, 2015 a, a new president was elected. He's changed the face of uh, investing into Argentina. Uh, saying that though, Oricobre did build and construct their project uh, during the former years. But uh, for us specifically, we're in the Salter province. There is no, no lithium mines in that Salter province. FMC are in Catamarca, uh, Oricobre and Huhui. Salter is a far better jurisdiction. Royalties are only 3% uh, compared to the other two jurisdictions being much higher. Uh, the governor, the mining secretary, uh, the president, we've met the president of Argentina and we've also met the Federal Mining Secretary. They're all very supportive, they all want foreign investment into the country. Uh, like I said, the Salter Province, very low taxes. So, um, you know, for us, it's, it's great days ahead. So, although you've had some trial production, when do you see production ramping up? It really is all about building that commercial phase of the project, commercial plant. That's what we've uh, been working on. We've got a PEA coming out in the next few, few uh, in the next few, in the week or so. Uh, so it's really getting those numbers out getting the investment, as I said, it's obviously not uh, traditional finance that, that funds lithium projects, it really is strategic investors, offtake partners and so forth. So once we get our economics out, we've got that trial product into the market for testing, uh, which is very important for, for lithium carbonate uh, production and product. So uh, once we get that out there, it's really then um, looking to secure that finance. And once we get that um, secured, we can go and start building our project and, and move into production within a couple of years. A couple of years, yeah. So you've got plenty of catalysts Okay. Yeah, obviously offtake partners are, are huge. We've seen with you know other lithium hopefuls uh, and producers uh, how important it is to to bring the right partners on board. Yep. And really for us, it's the economics that will uh, hopefully underpin and show the, the long-term viability of the project, but also getting those right partners on board. And, and we've been talking to the Japanese and the Koreans predominantly, also some uh, Chinese counterparties, but really where we think the best bang for buck is dealing with those Japanese uh, end user customers and strategic partners who have got similar culture to us, uh, are happy to invest and want to get involved in the lithium space. So um, that's very much a, a near term uh, precursor for, uh, for what we want to do. Okay, a lot to look forward to. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. No worries.